I often speak to people who have installed a network, but they haven't worked to an addressing sheet or a networking plan, which, okay, I understand. If you've got a small eight port switch, which is just servicing a TV, a Skybox and an Apple TV, I understand. When you start venturing into more complex networking setups, then it's really important to have your documentation up to date, any switches and cables that are labeled as well, and make sure that documentation is continually updated whenever there's been a change to the networking topology. One thing that I find really important when designing the network is the IP addressing. What is going to be the IP addressing network range? How big does the DHCP pool need to be? But equally, how many static IP addresses do I need? What host devices are going to be using static addressing? And what one's going to be using dynamic addressing? And do I need any subnets or supernets for those additional networks? Now, I'm not going to do a lecture on how to design a network as that will change project to project, depending on the devices on the network, the scale of the network, and the application of the network as well, whether it's a home or a business. But one of the common issues I do see is IP addressing. And one issue being when you've got a statically assigned IP address within the DHCP range, which is just not very good practice. So I'm gonna go through the three ways to configure an IP address. Before I start going into IP addressing, it might be worth you going to watch my what is an IP address video, which explains how an IP address is built. There's three ways to configure an IP address, whether it's statically, dynamically, or via address reservation. A static IP address is assigned to a device manually and is set up by the network admin. This could be an address for an IP camera or even a home automation system. The advantage of using a static IP address is the consistency of that host device being easy to locate on the network. Or even if it was a server, the ease that the end user will have to access that resource because the IP address isn't going to change. It's important to document when you're assigning a static IP address to a device because this is where human errors can come into play such as duplicate IP addressing. This is where two or more devices will have the same IP address. This will cause network instability and also the host instability as well. There will be at least three mandatory fields that need filling in when you're assigning a static IP. The IP address of the device that you're setting to a static IP, the subnet mask, and the gateway address, which is usually the router. Sometimes you might also see a DNS server field to fill in too. I'm going to assign my IP camera to a static address. In my Draytech router, in the ARP table, it's showing the camera on 192.168.1.84, which is in the DHCP range. So I can log in. And at the moment, the camera is set to DHCP. So I'm going to set it to 192.168.1.45, as long as that address is free. And that is a successful static address assignment away from the DHCP range. The camera will reboot. Now I can access the new address and go ahead and log into the camera. In the Draytech ARP table now, it shows the new IP address that the camera is using. Statically assigning devices on the network is going to be down to your network design. What addresses are going to be the static range and what addresses are going to be the DHCP range and make sure you assign hosts to those addresses accordingly. So what is DHCP? This is the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and is used to automatically assign host devices on the network an IP address. This could be supplied by a dedicated DHCP server or most of the time a router with a DHCP server built in as routers operate at layer 3 of the OSI and DHCP is layer 7. 
If you connect your phone to Wi-Fi or a laptop to the network, your device will send a DHCP Discover message to the network, the DHCP servers to discover. The DHCP server will reply with an offer which will contain an available IP address on offer to your device from the DHCP pool. Your host device will then send a request for that address and then the DHCP server will acknowledge that request and provide that IP address to your host device. Your device will now be assigned an IP address from the DHCP pool and be able to use the local network and even get out to the wide area network should you need to. When your device obtains an IP address, a lease timer then starts. This time can be set by the network admin in the DHCP server setup. Lease times can be set to be hours or even days at a time. We have leases so that available IP addresses aren't exhausted and are freed up once the lease expires. When the lease time is near an expiration, the host device will attempt to renew the lease. This tells the DHCP server that the host device is still connected and using the leased address and the lease will renew automatically when it expires. If the host device doesn't renew its DHCP lease, then the DHCP server will assume that the device is no longer connected to the network and it will reclaim the leased IP address and place that address back into the DHCP pool ready for another device to use. The DHCP pool is a range of IP addresses available for lease to devices. I usually leave certain devices to obtain a DHCP address and then leave them. Devices such as phones, tablets, laptops, as these host devices won't always be on the network and they're taken away from the local area network. So assigning them a static IP is just gonna be a waste of address resources. I also usually leave IoT devices on DHCP, but use another technique to ensure they get the same IP address all the time if needed. In my Draytech router, I've set up my DHCP scope from 81 to 254. So now if I connect my laptop to the local network, Placed within the DHCP range with an address assigned to me of 192.168.1.81 for a set amount of time, which by default in a Draytech router is 86,400 seconds. This can be adjusted accordingly. With my DHCP range being from 81 to 254, that means my static range will be from 2 to 80, one being the router's address. So it's up to you how many DHCP addresses you make available and how many static addresses that you make available to. One thing I see a lot, and I mentioned earlier on, is people assigning static addresses to devices within the DHCP range. And then this could cause problems down the line, such as IP conflicts. Let's set the scene. You've assigned your Apple TV a static IP address, but it's within the DHCP range. The Apple TV powers down or goes offline. For whatever reason, the DHCP lease expires DHCP server now sees that IP address is free and puts the address in its DHCP pool. The IP address is then assigned to a new device that's joined the network, say a phone. Apple TV powers back up or reconnects to the network and it's using its static address. But that address is now in use from the DHCP client. We now have two devices trying to use the same IP address which should be unique to a host device and will cause one of those devices not to be able to connect to the network. So it's important when you plan your network and allocate static IP ranges and dynamic IP ranges and document what addresses are static range and where the DHCP range starts and ends. Now, as I said, this isn't a tutorial on network design as designing the network will come with flowcharts, networking diagrams and other documentation too. The main focus here is just on the IP addressing. Devices that I place in a static range are usually your mission critical devices such as IP controlled power distribution, UPSs with network access, network switches, wireless access points, IP cameras and network video recorders, servers, home automation controllers and televisions, anything that's imperative to the workings of the main system or network and that will allow me to assign a static IP address too. You will come across devices that don't have the ability to assign a static IP such as, and at the time of this video, Heatmiser Neo Hubs. Or it could be a printer that hasn't got the ability to set a static IP address. 
For devices like this, we can use a DHCP reservation. A reservation is when a host device's MAC address is bound to the IP address that's been given to it by the DHCP server. If that device disconnects from the local area network, the DHCP server knows not to reallocate that address out of the DHCP pool because it's been reserved for that host device. We can either reserve the IP address within the DHCP range or we can reserve the address and change it in the DHCP server settings, which personally I prefer as I like to keep my IP address in neat and organized when it comes around to scanning IP addresses. Let's go and demonstrate. For example, I've got an Apple TV here on the network. Now, I know I can statically assign the Apple TV from its user interface, but let's assume you can't. The router arc table says the Apple TV is on 192.168.1.85 in the DHCP range. In the router, if I bind the IP to the MAC address, that device will now always use that IP address. As far as the host device is aware, it's using DHCP, but the DHCP server has reserved the IP address against the host device's MAC address. So when the DHCP server sees that MAC address, it will know the IP address for the device is 192.168.1.85 and reallocate that address. So what if we now want that device to be in my static range, allowing for more DHCP addresses to be available? Simple, I just changed the last octet of the IP address. So I'll change it to 36. So the address is now 192. 168.1.36 and I'll reboot the host device. Now it's back online. I'll go to the ARP cache table and we can see the address is now 1.36, which is within my static range. Now this may not work on all routers or DHCP servers, so check that your router's vendor supports reserving DHCP addresses in the static range. I know that Sky routers don't like this, so just check with your vendor. So that's three methods to setting up an IP address. Static assignment, a dynamic assignment, and reservations. Static addresses are used for mission critical or important devices, and dynamic addresses are used for dynamic devices, phones, tablets, laptops, and things like that. A reservation is a mixture of both. It could be a device that I can't set a static IP to, or a device that I'm not allowed to set to be a static IP, but I still want to have it in my static range and I would access it at the same IP address every time. Hope this video has been of some help and cleared up any questions you might have had to do with static IP addressing, dynamic IP addressing and IP reservations. Thank you very much for watching.